What's going on, Giants fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I want to talk about training camp so far, the offseason. Love to chop it up this time there in the summer. I know it's been um, a little while since I've done my last video, but appreciate you all sticking with us here. Make sure if you're new to check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate all of your support. So let's get into the meat of this video the Giants bringing in a new offensive lineman a 34 year old veteran guard Greg Van Roten formerly of the Las Vegas Raiders and many other teams so five days through training camp now the Giants offensive line has not looked great they're dealing with some injuries Evan Neal still not practicing John Michael Schmitz dealing with the shoulder injury and Jermaine Illuminar took a shot to midsection on the first day of camp so Greg Van Roten is a giant. They met with him last week at the facility, waited until early this week to bring him in. This is a guy who should step in as a starting guard for the Giants this season with 71 career starts, 17 last year at the right guard position, um, all 17 games. So very, very impressive. He has ties to new Giants O-line coach Carmen Brasillo, his O-line coach with the Raiders, former teammate of Illuminar as well. And Van Roten last season played 98% of the Raiders' offensive snaps. This is a versatile guy who has played both guard spots throughout the course of his career. Long career for him, definitely on the latter end of it. A UDFA in 2012 by the Packers out of Penn. Played there for two years, went to the Seahawks for a year, out of the league for two years. Comes back to the Jaguars in 2017. Got picked up by the Panthers, stayed there for three years, then went to the Jets. So he is familiar with MetLife in 2020, signed a three-year deal with them. Then went to the Bills in 22 after being released after two years with the Jets, spent a year there and a year with the Raiders. Uh, local guy from Rockville Center, New York, Chaminade High School product, 6'3", 305. And one stat that really sticks out about Van Roten, he ranked 13th, according to PFF, last year out of 85 guards in pass blocking efficiency. This was a much-needed add for the Giants' offensive line room, a room that lacks good depth. Uh, allowed five sacks last year with the Raiders, just three QB hits, though, and 13 QB pressures. Um, the Giants may want to ink him um, more than a year with the rate their O-line is going, but at 34 years old, a one-year deal would make the most sense. You know, JMS hurt, Evan Neal on pup. Second team O-line has looked bad. The biggest takeaway from this signing for me personally is that the Giants are keeping Illuminor at right tackle for good. Um, this leads me to ask the question, is the Evan Neal experiment at right tackle over? My answer, yes. Evan Neal won't only be the starting right tackle this season, you won't be on the starting offensive line come week one of 2024. It has been that bad of an offseason for him. Um, I think his time as a starting alignment for us is done. I think the draft pick was a bust. I think week one, you're going to see three free agents from this year's free agent class starting for the Giants at the O-line position with last year's second round pick and John Michael Schmitz at center and the 2020 all pro left tackle, Andrew Thomas. Um, that's my takeaway from this signing. I do wish Evan Neal the best. I know he'll be on the team this season, but at this point, he's better off as a guard. If he does wind up starting at any point this season, it will likely be at the guard position and not tackle. Hopefully, Illuminar stays healthy. I trust him a lot more. So, with the addition of Van Roten, the Giants have waived cornerback Aaron Robinson. Failed experiment three years with the team, entering a contract year. He's been hurt since 2022, hasn't played, hasn't even practiced. Um, third round pick at a UCF. The Giants traded up for this guy. Just goes to show you how bad Dave Gettleman's draft class that year was. Robinson played just nine games, 26 tackles, three passes defended in 2021, 2022. He started the year as the starting corner opposite of Adoree Jackson, had just six tackles before his season ended in week four. Awful, awful pick, unfortunately. I did like the guy, uh, high upside player, before the injury. Um, also dealt with an appendix issue, um, possible chronic pain there as well. And Azizo Jalari now stands as the only 
member of the 2021 draft class remaining. And now there's just nine Dave Gettleman picks left on this Giants roster picks or free agent signings, I should say. So Aaron Robinson is gone. Also late last week, the Giants signed Breon Borders, a corner, um, 29 years old, makes his 13th NFL stop. Raiders signed him as a UDFA out of Duke seven years ago. He spent time in Buffalo and Tennessee, ties to Shane Bowen and Joe Shane. In his seven seasons in the league, he has 42 tackles, seven passes defended, and a pick. Um, special teams drills look a lot more competitive under new special teams coordinator Michael Gobriel. I think this is a good addition to compete for a roster spot on that unit. So to make room for borders, the Giants released their fourth quarterback in Nathan Rourke. Was not given much work during the first week of camp. Makes sense. Jones is fully healthy now. You don't need much of a cushion behind him outside of Locke and DeVito. Um, so very happy about that. Also, Theo Johnson coming off pup. That is pretty interesting. Happy for him. He looked good in his first couple practices. Tremendous athletic upside for the rookie out of Penn State. But Daniel Bellinger is certainly the Giants starting tight end. So my early training camp analysis, well, I'm concerned about the O-line, JMS, shoulder injury, same shoulder he got hurt last year, different situation a little bit, Um, was limited to individual drills today and yesterday. You know, Jimmy Morrissey and Austin Schlotman have been in there taking reps with the ones. We also saw a little bit of John Runyon and Jay Kubis, the UDFA out of North Dakota State as well. My early camp standout so far, Malik Neighbors, if you haven't caught it yet, watch the Giants YouTube channel. He's done phenomenal stuff. Um, Dante Miller, Turbo Miller has looked better than Eric Gray, in my opinion, in a push for the running back two spot. Um, I also think he can really push for a final 53-man spot at this stage of the game. There's nobody in front of him behind Singletary outside of Tracy and Gray. Drew Phillips making a real push to start at the nickel in week one. I like what I've seen from him. Um, Good hand-eye coordination, defending passes, uh, good footwork as well. And then John Runyon, very versatile guy. He can play either guard spot. Um, Really happy with him, and I hope it turns out to be a good signing for the Giants. You know, Daniel Jones has looked hot and cold a little bit. Uh, More good than bad, in my personal opinion, to be blunt. But I am excited for the Giants this season, and Malik Neighbors is that guy. He will be the Giants' best receiver since Odell Beckham Jr., um, Daniel Jones finally has a number one receiver. No more excuses. Excited to talk more about training camp soon. Make my 53-man roster prediction ahead of the preseason. And I appreciate you all, as always, really excited to recap training camp and recap Hard Knocks eventually with my co-host, Sam Cardona, who just got married. So definitely excited to work with her soon and recap the HBO series, episode five, coming out shortly as we speak. Folks, make sure to check us out on all of our platforms on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. And without further ado, let's go Big Blue.